everybody hope you're doing well welcome back to another video restart is because i look a mess hello again uh slightly better so <laughs> i've got book mail yes i'm gonna show you my dress but i've got book mail and then the second book is that you the paper back just came out today <laughs> oh it's so beautiful oh my god Sally Rooney, beautiful world, where are you? Like, yes, the hardcover has been out for like months now, but I was like, I can't bring myself to spend £17 on a new book. And I literally scoured every charity shop I could find and went and go in for it. And I looked online for like used copies and stuff, and most of them was all still like £8 or something. So when Amazon was doing 50% off the pre order, and I had a coupon for £5 off, I was like, I'm just going to get it. And anyway, this is the topic of the video. I'm going to try and read this book. I hope to get through it by like the end of the week. I am so excited. Um, let me quickly like, give you the blurb, even though, but yeah, I'll give you the blurb, even though I'll tell you later what I thought about. So Alice, a novelist, meets Felix. He works in a warehouse and asks him if he'd like to travel to Rome with her. In Dublin, her best friend Eileen is getting over a breakup and slips back into flirting with Simon, a man who a man she has known since childhood. Alex, Fies Alex, Felix, Eileen and Simon are still young, but life is catching up with them. They desire each other, they delude each other, they worry about sex and friendship and the times they live in. Will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world? Question mark. Um, uh, if you haven't read my rap, if you haven't watched my wrap up, which I literally just posted today, because it was just, it was taking so long to load. Oh my God. But watch that video. I posted it today, Tuesday. Um, and yeah, so you'll know I like her books. <laughs> So I'm just so excited to get into this and yes, it's actually been a couple days since I got this. I haven't actually started reading it yet because I've just been busy, you know? <laughs> okay, defensive much, but I'm going to start reading some now and I'll update you soon. So I've only read like one chapter, so like nothing much and it definitely seems um more like descriptive than conversations with friends and normal people like i feel like she's putting more emphasis on like describing like the world the moment hasn't gripped me as much as normal people did in like the first few pages but obviously like i'm like no way through it anyway <laughs> so i'm gonna read some more and give you a little update in a bit i put my glasses on because i'm sort of getting a migraine <sighs> i don't know i don't know what i'm feeling about this book at the moment on page 33 and at the moment it's just it's very like just like it's just words and words and it's like a little bit too dense in a way. Um, yeah, at the moment, I'm not really feeling it. The character's a bit eh, and like it's just quite repetitive as well. And still, this woman is not using speech marks. Why? Oh my god, you can't. And then it's, it's so annoying, it's just like, I remarked, da -da -da -da, and then something, something, and then the speech I said, or you know, something like that. I'm just like, hun, you wouldn't need all of this. Oh no, I can see myself in the mirror. Um, if you just used proper grammar, <laughs> punctuation, or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna read some more. <laughs> I'm a little bit underwhelmed at the moment if i'm being completely honest with you but yeah you constantly see it like the character 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 did said you i'm just i don't know maybe it's because at the moment it's kind of like thinking that like it's going back in time and like so we're getting to like know what the characters like stories is before the actual like 
story continues. Okay, so I've read some more. Wait, let me turn my fan off. Uh, let me see off a bit. And... Uh, I really enjoyed it now. I'm so happy. I just felt like, like the first bit, I was just... I was just getting used to it and getting back used to her writing style. Um, and I definitely feel, compared to the other novels, this is more mature, in a sense, than Conversations and Normal People. And it is very detail-heavy, but at first I was like, this is just so irrelevant. I, like, just bombarded with too much. But now I really, I understand why she's doing it. And it's so you can really, like, understand everything. And it just, it just, it just feels so lifelike and real. And, and I know I've, other people have said this in reviews and stuff about the fact that she doesn't use quotation marks. And I feel like it probably works the best in this book. Because... Of the detailness and how lifelike it is it actually feels like you're there in a way and then if there was these quotation marks and you realizing that there is this paper separating you from a person in a sense well at the moment it goes like a chapter about sort of like alice's and felix's story and then it's a uh, letter an email from alice to eileen first person and then it's eileen and simon's like story and then it's a letter from eileen to alice and then that's how it goes on and i am really enjoying this format to be honest i am really enjoying it so much <laughs> and i feel like um sadie puts a lot of like references and brings in the idea and conversations on like marxist and like communist sort of like ideology and i feel that how it's been addressed in the emails is the most realistic addition yet that she has done in her books and how like in these emails they're talking about these like big topics and like lots of things about how it's affecting like like how they are thinking about it in their like day-to-day -day life and about certain things like about going to the store or and yeah i am really enjoying this at the moment so i'm gonna read some more i'm only on 70 page 73 and this is already looking like it's gonna be like at least at least a four star at least a four star so yes I'll update you after. Okay, not a spoiler, because this is a spoiler-free reading vlog. <laughs> but there were queer characters. <gasps> oh my god. Yes! <gasps> and if you don't know already, I have a massive soft spot for queer characters. Um, biased, as some might say. I don't know, but I just... If I'm ever reading a book and it's queer characters in it, I'm just always just like, I love this. The way it's been described already in like the, in like the few mentions of queerness in the book. <sighs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh my God. <gasps> I'm actually falling in love with this book. I'm, I'm really falling in love with this book. I started off like down here and it's like slowly going up and up and up. So like, yes, so it's been two days and I've just been slowly trying to get through it. Yeah, okay, when it says, um, the New York Times review, funny and smart, full of sex and love, it was, yeah, because <laughs> there is a lot of, um, you know, the deed, um, <laughs> that, that goes on in this book. Oh my god, some of, like, the conversations and, like, not debates per se, but just like sharing of opinions on certain topics and things in these letters between these two women. It's just like my brain is just going through the motions and it's just, oh, 
they really, really make you think. Like, wow. Like, literally, wow. I am loving the, the... Like, honestly, these letters are, like, the best part of the book, I think. In my, in my opinion, I, like, I love them so much. Like, it's just so... It's really nice seeing, like, their insights and how their minds are working in a way. That's what I feel like Sally really does so well in her books, is that you can really, like, get inside the minds of these characters and they just... <sighs> okay, they're a bit problematic sometimes, but they just, like, chat stuff. And you're like, I really do not believe that. And then other times you're like, I really do understand that. And other times, most of the time, for me anyway, I'm like... I don't know, but Han, you're making me think. <laughs> and I mean, that's I mean that's good, isn't it? Like you want a book to make you think about things, and they actually get like, things that like are relevant to your daily life. Like literally, they're things about like sort of like the meaning of life in a way. And although it sounds so like flowery and like big and like blah blah blah, blah the meaning of life so blah, blah, blah. but like no, it's more like. I don't know, but there was like a bit earlier when you were saying like on your deathbed and stuff, are you really talking about all these big issues in the world and like you're not, you're thinking about your family and your friends and like things that are close to you and your loves and relationships and you know sort of things like that and they are the things that although they're not big they're individual to everyone and they're big to that person and they're small in the grand scheme of things but when you add them all up together they're like the main thing that like makes the world go around is like people's relationships and conversations and loves and friendships and desires and things they do and things they say places they go and all these sort of like things and i don't know i'm just <laughs> this woman does things to my brain that just makes me just talk and talk and talk and talk <laughs> so, so i get how some people can find her writing a little bit off putting just by how intellectual in a way it is and all these like big terms and words and things like that i feel like it makes me smarter reading as well <laughs> like not i mean like in general it does but i mean like reading her specifically just like the words and the way she phrases things it's just very like intellectually done and i just i live for it to be honest i live for it <laughs> Sometimes you just want to get inside this page and just slap people around the face. Literally, like, why? Why, why do characters have to be just so annoying sometimes? <sighs> I was thinking about, like, these ideas of what could have been and them sort of things. And, I don't know, it's kind of, like, sad in a way, but also her viewpoint on it is quite... Good. I don't know what to say, but I like the way she's thinking about this, like whole idea of like what could have been, and if we did so and so, and if I didn't, and if I, if I, if I, you know, we sort of like ifs and buts. Okay, so I've just come to this passage, and it has done something to me, and my brain is like, wow. I don't know. I just, I really love it, and I just feel like I want to share it. And it's not a spoiler anyway. It's just like it's just like a little part of the book that's just like. Amazing. Uh, okay, okay. So let me just say, the women unspeaking, their eyes closed tight, their arm dropped around one another for a second, two seconds, three. Were they aware in the intensity of their embrace of something slightly ridiculous about this tableau? Something almost comical as someone nearby sneezed violently into a crumpled tissue, as a dirty discarded plastic bottle scuttled along the platform under a breath of wind, as a mechanised billboard on the station wall rotated from an advertisement for hair products to an advertisement for car insurance, as life in its ordinariness and even ugly vulgarity imposed itself everywhere all around them?
Or were they in this moment unaware, of, or something more than unaware? Were they somehow invulnerable to, untouched by, vulgarity and ugliness, glancing for a moment into something deeper, something concealed beneath the surface of life? Not unreality, but a hidden reality, the presence at all times, in all places, of a beautiful world. This woman, this woman and her brain and her fingers, just, they do something. They do something incredible, literally, like, I don't know. This lady has, like, a hold on my brain and my heart and my personhood. I don't know, there's just... <sighs> wow, like... I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. Okay, I know it's my, like, queer bias coming through, but as we're getting on to... Let's say nothing, because... But I'm just, like, secretly, I'm like... I wanted to turn queer. I really... I wanted to turn queer so badly, but then also at the same time, I'm like... Well, no, because I, I kind of want, like, good things for the other two characters as well. But then I'm like, <gasps> I don't know. <laughs> I I think the way, like, Fitz's character, like, his, like, analysis is sort of being shown at this point. I'm kind of liking it. And, I mean, I haven't really read that much on. It's just, like, initial impressions, I'm like... Do I? Don't I? I don't know. I kind of do, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Finished. Oh, wow. Like, just after I film this, I'm gonna um, write my Goodreads review and Storygraph review. So if you want to know more about that stuff, just look on there. I just want to do just a little, like, mini review, just on it. So I personally think I would give this 4.75 stars. And it's not getting a full 5, just because... I personally find it a little bit too descriptive heavy. And a lot of it is just, like, like a whole pages of just writing and it just kind of gets me a bit like you know I can't really just like go through the whole thing um and it also brings me to like the speech quotation marks that kind of just still irks me but it's her style okay I'm have to try and get over it because I love this woman and I'm gonna keep reading more of her stuff so you know but yeah um and like, I do, I, I understand, I do like how it is more, like, adult in a way. And it's, like, it's so descriptive, which I, like, love. But it's also just sometimes a bit too much. Um, and I know it is, a, like, it's not all they do. <laughs> but, like, there is quite a lot of sex in it. And um, maybe it's a little bit overkill. I don't know. But, yeah, so I'm not going to say anything more other than that I did really enjoy this book. And I would wholeheartedly recommend it. I loved it. I loved it so much. Oh, my God. This woman is just... Ugh. And it ends um, during the pandemic, which is... I mean, I knew that anyway because I've read reviews. But I... Some people said they didn't like it in this book. It was just, like, thrown in willy-nilly. And I do kind of get that, but I personally enjoyed it because you you end them on like a sort of like, sort of, you know, wibbly wobbly like stage and you don't really know what's going to happen. And then when these last two letter chapters come, um, it's like... You just you just get to know more about what's happened over the time in a way, but even though it's only very short, how it ended just made me happy, and yeah, and I would like I would I I, I wanted more in a way 
you know, I, yeah, I really loved it. So, yeah. Anyway, that was my review of Beautiful World, What Are You? by Mummy. I'm sorry, Mummy. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mummy. Uh, sorry, Sally. Sorry, Mummy. <laughs> by Sally Rooney. <laughs> um yeah 4.75 stars read it and hope you're doing well bye bye